peace, peace, peace. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another day to labor in the vineyard of the Most High with your brother. Another day to get in the almighty, glorious, undefeated world to see what the most I got to serve. And what we eating on the day is more understanding of the revelations, of the prophecies to continue separating ourselves from the Gentiles and those that follow their doctrine, and those that lack in their study to show themselves approved. So I just want to keep advancing us spiritually to keep us on track and to show us all things through the word. So what we're going to see is the second coming of Christ already happened. All right? And we're going to see the cycles. So remember, the Old Testament was a, a time frame. The New Testament was a time frame. The Apocrypha was a time frame. The Book of Mormon was a time frame. But when you read all the books up, the Spirit will start to adjust you to see the different time frames and to see different events that happened and ones that have passed. But when we don't go through the different books, we missing bits and pieces. But we gonna, we gonna line it up and see. We gonna line it up and see. I know some of y'all might think your brother done bumped his head, but nah, nah, nah. I was I was studying this morning and I was reading and when I ran across and Matthew is verse twenty it's chapter twenty four, but in the on um, the gospel of the Nazarenes too. When they talk about in this generation Said not pass, but for all these things come come to pass. And once again, just like the other day, I told y'all the spirit stopped me right there. And then I started to, to, to go in the thought. And I realized the Book of Mormon, that's when a lot of them things took place. Well, oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm gonna show it to you. I ain't gonna talk about it. I'm gonna show it in the word. We're gonna start in the gospel of the Nazarenes. Alright? And we're going to go to chapter 61, which the equivalent in the Bible would be Matthew 24. But you see the difference, the title right here. It said, Yahshua foretells the end of the cycle. Not the end of the world, but the end of the cycle. All right. So remember, in the Old Testament, when the flood came, that was the end of a cycle right there. That cycle came to an end when the flood came, when destruction come. Every time destruction is sent, it's the end of a cycle. All right? So after Yahshua died, that was the end of a cycle right there. All right? And even with the Gentiles, that's, that's when they restarted time. The time frame we on now, this is 2022 or really 2012 A.D. All right, they reached out in time. So that indication right there that this is a new cycle of time. All right? But that right there stuck out to me when I was reading this earlier. All right? That the cycle is not the end of the world. The end of the world is what's to come. That's the end of the Babylon system. Because the Babylon system is the worldly system. That's the world that he tell us to stay out of. All right? But... A lot of these things right here, it already happened. All right? And by us following the Gentiles and the camps and them, they don't read the Book of Mormon, so they're missing the second stick. So they don't have the rest of the prophecies to see how a lot of this thing happened already. And a lot of us, we we also has been missing it. All right? But we're we going to get clarification from the Spirit here today. All right? Let's start in verse 3. And this is the only part in this chapter that's not in Matthew right here. Is this verse right here. 
bro. So we gonna start right here so we can see. And in those days, those that have power should gather to themselves the lands and riches of the earth for their own lusts. All right, and in this time frame, this was still when we was ruling the world. The Gentiles was not in rulership at, at this time. And shall oppress the many who lack and hold them in bondage and use them to increase their riches. The same thing. History repeats itself. And they shall oppress even the beast of the field, setting up the abominable thing, which is the abomination of desolation. But the Lord shall send them his messenger, and they shall proclaim the law, which men have hidden by their traditions. The same as right now. All right. He proclaiming the truth of the law because everybody that's following the traditions is blind to what the spirit wants to, wants to show us. And those that transgress shall reap the harvest of their deeds. Verse 10. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from the heavens and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Alright, so a lot of us we repeat this right here and we looking for this to come, not knowing that all oh, this already that happened already. And that's not to say that it won't happen again, but the second coming, it did happen already. And that's what we about to see when we tie the scriptures together. All right. But the Gentiles listening to them and the camp brethren, they think these things ain't that happened before. So they looking for the prophecies that happen, but the prophecies that already been fulfilled right here. And knowing what prophecies been fulfilled help keep you on a time scale with the spirit to where the spirit can show you more because you already see that certain things then already came to pass. All right, so you're not looking for prophecies that in past they come. So now the spirit can move you on farther to show you more. All right, because you're not stuck in a previous time frame like the Gentiles. The Gentiles are stuck in the past. And the Count Brothers, they stuck in the past because some of them is Old Testament only, which means they definitely stuck. And then you got some of them, they don't, they don't read outside of certain books. They don't read the Keys. They don't read the Book of Mormon. They don't read the Third Testament. It's just other books that they're just not going to touch. So the Spirit can't show them, but so much. Because they cut off the words. The words is spirit. All right. They was wrote by a spirit to other spirits. All right. Let's keep going. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, should the sun be darkened, and the moon should not give her light, and the stars shall fall from the heavens, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound as of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. Now verse 12, I'm going to go halfway down. And this right here was what drew my attention earlier and put me on pause to go into thought. Verily I say to you, this generation should not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Right there. That's what I stopped on when I was reading earlier. Because he wasn't talking about a future generation. He was talking to all them Negroes that was around him at that time. 2,000 years ago, he said, I say to you, this generation, y'all, y'all generation that he was talking to shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. 
Now, following the Gentiles, we take this out of context. We take this to be a future time frame. But literally, he was talking to those around him at that time. Just like when he told them one stone would not rest upon another when Jerusalem was going to be destroyed. That took place in their time frame. So this same prophecy right here that a lot of us think is talk about in the future. No, nah, he was talking to them at that time frame that was around him. I say to you, this generation shall not pass to all these things be fulfilled. The heavens and the earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Now, he's not saying at this time frame the heavens and the earth shall be rolled up like a scroll, like it's saying Revelation. No, nah, that's a later time. He was just giving them a, a, what's the word? Simile, analogy, whatever the word is. He was just telling them the heavens and the earth eventually shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But uh, that day and hour, no man knows. No, not even the angels, but the Lord only. For as in the days of Enoch and Noah, so also should the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your master may come. Alright? So, all the things that it talk about in Matthew in Matthew 24 remember like we read at the beginning he foretelling the end of that time frame the end of that cycle right there that's, that's what he doing and like he said everything that he told them was coming to pass in that generation not in a future generation he won't give them a future prophecy at that time he would tell them Negroes that everything that he told them What's going to happen? And they were going to see it. And many of them didn't believe. Just like they didn't believe Noah in the previous cycle. When Noah was sent to testify to them that this was about to happen. Alright, so the Most High sent his servants in different time frames. That tell us what's going to happen and how it's going to go. But those that don't believe suffer the wrath. So now, let's verify what we just read. Let's go to the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon. We're going to go to the Book of Helaman. Alright. And this is chapter 14. And we're going to see once again. The Most High sent his prophet. Samuel the Lamanite. He sent him. To tell us. What was going to happen. And this took place over here. In the Americas. Alright. So let's go. Starting at verse 20. Chapter 14. But behold, as I said unto you concerning another sign, a sign of his death, speaking on Yahshua's death. Behold, in that day that he shall suffer death, the sun shall be darkened and refuse to give his light unto you. Remember, we just read the sun shall be darkened. And also the moon and the stars. And there should be no light upon the face of this land, even from the time that he shall suffer death for the space of three days, to the time that he shall rise again from the dead. Yea, at the time that he should give up the ghost, there should be thundering and lightnings for the space of many hours, and the earth shall shake and tremble. And the rocks which are upon the face of this earth, which are both above the earth and beneath, which ye know at this time are solid, or the more part of it is one solid mass, shall be broken up. Yea, they shall be ripped in twain, and shall ever after.
to be found in seams and in cracks and in broken fragments upon the face of the whole earth. Yea, both above the earth and beneath. And behold, there should be great tempests and there should be many mountains laid low like unto a valley. And there should be many places which I now call valleys which shall become mountains whose height is great. And many highways, and many highways shall be broken up, and many cities shall become desolate, and many graves shall be opened, and shall yield up many of their dead, and many saints shall appear unto many. And behold, thus hath the angel spoken unto me, for he said unto me, that there should be thundering and lightnings for the space of many hours. And he said unto me, that while the thunder and lightning last in the tempest, that these things should be, and that darkness should cover the face of the whole earth for the space of three days. And the angel said unto me, that many should see greater things than these to the intent that they might believe that these signs and wonders should come to pass upon all the face of this land, to the intent that there should be no cause for unbelief, to the intent that there should be no cause for unbelief among the children of men, and this to the intent that whosoever will believe might be saved and that whosoever would not believe a righteous judgment might come upon them and also if they are condemned they bring upon themselves their own condemnation and now remember remember my brethren that whosoever perish perish unto himself and whosoever does iniquity does it unto himself. For behold, ye are free. Ye are permitted to act for yourselves. For behold, God hath given unto you a knowledge, and he hath made you free. He hath given unto you that ye might know good from evil. And he hath given unto you that ye might choose life or death. And ye can do good and be restored unto that which is good or have that which is good restored unto you or ye can do evil and have that which is evil restored unto you and that's in when you come back in your next incarnation but now all right so samuel the lamanite just was sent to tell them what was about to go on so now let's go to three nephi chapter eight Let's start at the header right here. Tempests, earthquakes, fires, whirlwinds, and physical upheavals attest to the crucifixion of Yahshua. Many people are destroyed. Darkness covers the land for three days. Those who remain bemoan their fate. And now it came to pass that according to our record, and we know our record to be true, for behold, it was a righteous man who did keep the record. For he truly did many miracles in the name of Yahshua. And there was not any man who could do a miracle in the name of Yahshua except he was cleansed every way from his iniquity. And now it came to pass if there was no mistake made by this man in the reckoning of our time, the 33rd year had passed away. And the people began to look with great earnestness for the sign which had been given by the prophet Samuel, the Lamanite. Yea, for the time that there should be darkness for the space of three days over the face of the land. And there began to be great doubtings and disputations among the people, notwithstanding so many signs have been given. And it came to pass in the 34th year, in the first month, 
On the fourth day of the month, there arose a great storm, such a one as never had been known in all the land. And there was also a great and terrible tempest, and there was terrible thunder, and so much that it did shake the whole earth as if it was about to divide asunder. And there were exceedingly sharp lightnings, such as never had been known in all the land. And the city of Zarahemma did catch fire. And the city of Moroni did sink into the depths of the sea. And the inhabitants thereof were drowned. And the earth was carried up upon the city of Moroni, that in the place of the city there became a great mountain. And there was a great and terrible destruction in the land southward. But behold, there was a more great and terrible destruction in the land northward. For behold, the whole face of the land was changed because of the tempest and the whirlwinds and the thunder and lightning and the exceedingly great quaking of the whole earth. And the highways were broken up, and the level roads were spoiled, and many smooth places became rough. And many great and notable cities were sunk. Many were burned, and many were shaken to the buildings thereof had fallen to the earth, and the inhabitants thereof were slain, and the places were left desolate. And there were some cities which remained, but the damage thereof was so exceedingly great, and there were many in them who were slain. And there were some who were carried away in the whirlwind, in the tornadoes. And whether they went, no man knows, except they know they were carried away. And thus, the face of the whole earth became deformed because of the tempest and the thunder and lightnings and the quaking of the earth. And behold, the rocks were rent in twain. They were broken up upon the face of the whole earth and so much that they were found in broken fragments and in seams and in cracks upon all the face of the land. And it came to pass that when the thunder and lightning and storm and tempests and quakings of the earth did cease, for behold, they did last for about the space of three hours. And it was said by some that the time was greater. Nevertheless, all these great and terrible things were done in about the space of three hours. And then behold, there was darkness upon the face of the land. And it came to pass that there was thick darkness upon all the face of the land, and so much that the inhabitants thereof who had not fallen could feel the vapor of darkness. And there could be no light because of the darkness, neither candles, neither torches, neither could there be fire lit with their fine and exceeding dry wood, so that there could not be any light at all. There was not any light seen, neither fire, nor glimmer, neither the sun, nor the moon, nor the stars. All right, and remember what we read in the gospel uh, on the Nazarenes, the same as in Matthew. All right, when it said the sun was not going to shine, nor the moon was going to give her light, and the stars was going to fall. Neither the sun, nor the moon, nor the stars. For so great were the mist of darkness which were upon the face of the land. And it came to pass that it did last for the space of three days, that there was no light seen. And there was great mourning and howling and weeping among all the people continually. Yea, great were the groanings of the people because of the darkness and the great destruction which had come upon them. And in one place they were heard to cry, saying, Oh, if we had repented before this great and terrible day. 
And then would our brethren have been spared, and they would not have been burned in that great city, Zarahemla. Now, let's go to 3 Nephi chapter 10, starting at verse 2. But so great was the astonishment of the people that they did cease lamenting and howling for the loss of their kindred, which had been slain. Therefore, there was silence in all the land for the space of many hours. And it came to pass that there came a voice again unto the people, and all the people did hear and did witness of it, saying, O ye people of these great cities which have fallen, who are descendants of Jacob, who are descendants of Jacob, yea, who are of the house of Israel, how often have I gathered you as a hen gathereth her chicken under her wings and have nourished you? Verse 11. And thus far were the scriptures fulfilled, which have been spoken by the prophets. And thus far were the scriptures fulfilled, which have been spoken by the prophets. And it was the more righteous part of the people who were saved. And it was they who received the prophets and stoned them not. And it was they who had not shed the blood of the saints who were spared. And they were spared and were not sunk and buried up in the earth. And they were not drowned in the depths of the sea. And they were not burned by fire. Neither were they fallen upon and crushed to death. And they were not carried away in the tornadoes. Neither were they overpowered by the vapor of smoking of darkness. And now, whoso readeth, let him understand. He that hath the scriptures, let him search them, and see, and behold, if all these deaths and destructions by fire, and by smoke, and by tempest, and by tornadoes, and by the opening of the earth to receive them, and all these things are not until the fulfilling of the prophecies of many of the holy prophets. Let him see if these things are not until the fulfilling of the prophecies of many of the holy prophets. Keep going. Chapter 11. 3 Nephi chapter 11. Starting at verse 8. And it came to pass. As they understood. They cast their eyes up again. Towards the heavens. And behold. They saw a man. Descending out of the heavens. And he was clothed in a white robe. And he came down and stood in the midst of them. All right, so right here, this is when it's going to go into the second coming. This is when he returned in the chariot, which we're going to see. All right, but this is how that prophecy was already fulfilled. But the churches and the brothers that don't read the Book of Mormon, it's been hidden from them. All right, so let, 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 let's get it. And it came to pass that like they understood. They cast their eyes up again towards the heavens. And behold, they saw a man descending out of the heavens. And he was clothed in a white robe. And he came down and stood in the midst of them. All right, so he came off the chariot. And the eyes of the whole multitude were turned upon him. The eyes of the whole multitude were turned upon him. All right, you see how the Most High operate? And that's the same thing that's going to happen in the near future here. 
Everything they had to distract them was took away. He tore everything up, so they ain't had no choice but to look and see what was coming out of the heavens. They ain't had nothing else to pay attention to. And that's the way it's gonna be again. All right. They ain't gonna have no, the whole world gonna know when the chariots return. Because the internet and all the technology is gonna go down. You ain't gonna have no choice but to see what's going on outside. In the eyes of the whole multitude were turned upon him. And they did not open their mouths, even one to another. And was not and was not what it meant. For they thought it was an angel that had appeared unto them. And it came to pass that he stretched forth his hand and spoke unto the people, saying, Behold, I am Yahshua the Christ, whom the prophets testified shall come into the world. All right, so here go to, this is the second coming, right here. Behold, I am Yahshua the Christ, whom the prophets testified shall come into the world. And behold, I am the light and the life of the world. And I have drunk out of that bitter cup which the Father had given me and had glorified the Father and taken upon me the sins of the world in the which I had suffered the will of the Father in all things from the beginning. And it came to pass that when Yahshua had spoken these words, the whole multitude fell to the earth. For they remembered, for they remembered that it had been prophesied among them that the Christ, that Yahshua, should show himself unto them after his ascension into heaven. It had been prophesied among them that Yahshua should show himself unto them after his ascension into the heavens. There is the second coming. But let's keep going. 3 Nephi chapter 19, verse 14. And behold, they were encircled about as if it were by fire. And they're speaking on another chariot. And it came down from the heavens. And the multitude did witness it and did bear record. And angels did come down out of the heavens and did minister unto them. And it came to pass that while the angels were ministering unto the disciples, behold, Yahshua came and stood in the midst and ministered unto them. Verse 19. And it came to pass that Yahshua departed out of the midst of them and went a little way off from them and bowed himself to the earth. And he said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast given the Holy Spirit unto these whom I have chosen. And it is because of their belief, it is because of their belief in me that I have chosen them out of the world. That's all we need right there to prove our case. That the second coming of the Christ, of Yahshua, Already did happen. Alright. And that was the end of a cycle. And right now, we come into the close of another cycle. But the close of this cycle is bringing the end of the world, which is the worldly system, the Babylon system. Alright. So, as it was then, so shall it be now. The same way it was in the time of Noah. The same way it was 2,000 years ago when Yahshua died, rose, and returned. All right? And it's going to be the same thing again right now. Many not going to believe. And we see how the righteous was fed. 
And right now what you see, the tornadoes picking up, the earthquakes picking up, the firestorms all through all the wild forest fires, hurricanes, and it's the same thing that happened before. History repeats itself in cycles. So the most high tell his people what to happen, but the majority don't believe. And he always sent a prophet to warn them, to warn us and tell us what's gonna happen and what's then came to pass. But the majority brush it off. All right, peace.